Hi, this is Rachel Beard, Security Architect for Salesforce. I work with our customers every day to address top of mind security and compliance concerns. Trust is our number one priority at Salesforce and my customers also want to be able to show their stakeholders that they're applying security and technical measures to protect their sensitive data. Today, I'm gonna to show you some of the advanced security controls that you can apply to encrypt data at rest, to monitor access to data and react to suspicious events in real time with alerts, prevention, and threat detection. I'll also show you how to strengthen security and compliance for data in sandboxes with Datamask. First, let's take a look at Salesforce Shield. With platform encryption, you're able to apply an additional layer of security to your most sensitive data, encrypting it at rest. Platform encryption allows you to control the life cycle of your key material using Salesforce's tenant secrets or bringing your own keys. You can rotate your keys on demand and you can also export, import new keys or destroy key material according to your timeline and requirements. Encrypting data is easy too. You can set policies on a field by field basis with just a few clicks. We've provided a simple screen that allows you to quickly audit how much of your data has been encrypted and then to synchronize your data to encrypt with your latest key version. Moving on from platform encryption, let's take a look at event monitoring. Companies of any size and industry are able to use event monitoring to track user behavior and quickly identify anomalous behavior patterns. You can also use transaction security to create policies that work in real time to prevent risky behaviors, like exporting a large report with a lot of rows. You can build a policy like that with clicks and it will alert the admin and prevent the export from being completed. I'll show you an example of this right now. When you build a policy, you have the option to build with Condition Builder for a lot of simple use cases. And we also have the option to build an Apex when you have more complex logic. For our use case, we're going to prevent a large download. So we're gonna select reporting event and the operation that we're going to work with here is report export. When we're thinking about a large report, we're gonna set a criteria for how many rows can be processed at one time. And here we'll set a policy that says we want to prevent any report that has more than 100 records from being downloaded. Here we're simply setting the conditions that the policy is going to look for. And on the next page, we say what we want to have happen when those conditions are met. In this case, we're going to block the download and we're also going to notify the admin about the incident. And we'll say here, no large download. So we've named our policy and we have enabled it. Let's take a look at it in action. Here we have a report with about a thousand rows on it. So now when our user wants to download the data, you'll see that our transaction security policy fires and it tells us that the operation that we requested is not allowed because of the security policy in this environment. Transaction security policies are really powerful because they run in real time to prevent data loss and that stops risky behavior rate right in its tracks. You can also subscribe to real time events for streaming access to user activity so you can get that full picture of what your users are doing in your environment. So here we just see that event around exporting data and we can get a picture for how much data was included, what types of data were on the report, which user was engaging here, the time of day. A lot of context is provided with this tool. All right, so moving on from Shield, let's talk about data in sandboxes. When you copy data from production to a sandbox, it's important to account for the different types of users who may access the data in those environments. Developers, third-party contractors, user acceptance testers, and training teams need to be able to access the sandbox, and they must have production quality data without exposing PII or customer information. With Datamask, you can easily build policies that obfuscate sensitive data in a permanent way, so that you no longer have to worry about PII. You could choose to replace a name 
with a pseudonym from the library. So for example, take a name like Rachel and it could be transformed into Sarah or Thomas or Rebecca, another similar type of a first name from a library we provide. Or you could replace a custom value with a pattern and you can define the pattern of data that you'd like to provide. You can anonymize completely using random characters, or you can even delete the options, uh, the data from even showing up in the fields at all. So you've got quite a few options that you can configure to meet the needs of your data. This process is really easy to configure and it's infinitely repeatable, saving a great deal of developer time and speeding up your releases. So these are all great security controls that are simple to configure and maintain, all while maintaining your internal and external compliance regulations at every step. You can visit Trailhead to get started. We have great trails on Shield. I encourage you to complete all of those. And we also have a trail for Datamask. So you can learn how to keep data even more secure on the world's most trusted cloud. Thank you.